Again, welcome to introduction to computers lectures. In these lectures, we're going to cover the six basic types of computers and giving at least one example of each type of computer and stating what that computer might be used for. So we start with the six basic categories of computers. Uh, so embedded computer is first, mobile devices, personal computers, servers, mainframes, and supercomputers. Again, we shall go through each of these computers. In our previous lectures, again, we defined what is a computer, which we said again, is any electronic device that can take an input, process the input, and be able to store the data or present the data, output the data. So all the six categories again can do that. So first we start with embedded computers. So embedded computers normally are embedded into a product and designed to perform a specific task or function for that product. So example will be our vehicle or cars. We may have a special computers which is embedded to the vehicle. Now, these computers are not general purpose. They are used for a special or a specific tax in the vehicle. An example can be our television, uh, refrigerators, uh, as you get so many devices. So here we say it cannot be used as a general purpose computer. So embedded computers is for again, a specific task, a special computer to perform a specific task on a product. Often embedded into, so these are some few household appearances, such as again, air condition, refrigerators, uh, DVD drives, uh, TV, smart TV, etc. Another example is thermostats, sewing machines, treadmills in our gym, answering machines in our telephone, cars. So here we have what we call the trend box. Uh, we have a tiny pieces, can look like a USB flash drive or small circuit board, but typically connect your TV to the internet to display the web content. So again, this would be a tiny, a computer, I would say a tiny personal computer. Again, it looks like that's the image here. It looks like, again, a USB flash drive or small circuit board, but it's used again to connect our TV to the internet or display a web content. Now also some are full computers. So the next is the mobile devices. As we all know, a mobile device, again, have special devices for input processing, output and also storage. So mobile devices, as example, is the smartphone or tablet, they are computers. So here we see a small, a very small device, device with some type of built-in computing or internet capabilities. Most of our, again, smartphone can be used to browse the internet. So typically it has a very small screen and also a keyboard. Example can be our smartphones, handheld gaming devices like PS4, PlayStations, portable digital media players, media tablets. The next will be our personal computers. Now the personal computers or even the mobile device is a general purpose computers. We can use it to perform different types of tasks. So a small computer designed to be used by one person at a time. Also called a micro computer. And available in different sizes and shapes. And we can see example in our graph. So we have the desktop computers on or next to a desk. We also have the tower case, which is again the diagram here, or desktop case or all in one, all in one is example here. So normally we have a monitor and a computer system. They are all again built into one unit. 
so I can carry my monitor, but again, we have the computer, everything all in one. We also have the PCs, and normally they are not portable. Uh, so portable computers designed to be carried around easily. Uh, desktop or tower case computer cannot be carried around easily. So a fully functional computer, example would be the laptop, uh, notebook, they are again portable computers because again, we can carry them around. These are typically used a clamshell design. We also have a tablet computers, usually use a digital pin or stylus or touch screen, uh, like ATM or again, our smartphone. No physical keyboard, also can use on an on-screen or attached keyboard. We also have the hybrid notebook, tablet, computers, and netbooks. These are smaller and also have more limited features than conventional notebooks. Example would be the Google Chrome. And so the example of a notebook, tablet, hybrid notebook and tablet. Again, these are portable computers. We also have the thin client and internet appearances. Uh, normally, a thin client is designed to utilize the network for much of its processing. Example would be if we go to the airport and the check-in area, most of the time you see only the keyboard and also a monitor. There's no computer around, so it's called a thin client. All the processing normally take place in a special computer. It's lower cost and also increased security and easier maintenance. Limited or no local storage at all. Uh, most of them, uh, there's no any local storage. Not able to function as a computer if network is down. We also have the internet appearances. These are specialized network computers only designed for internet access. Uh, some use apps to deliver news or sports scores, weather, music, and other web-based information. Now we we'll move to the larger computers. Uh, here we talk about servers. So a server normally is a medium-sized computer used to host programs and data for a small network. So the concept of a server is that you may have a computer, uh, let's say a desktop computer or portable computers. It can be any amount of computers, depends on the design of the networking system. And these computers will be connected to the server. And most of the applications, um, data, everything is in the server. So now we can use our personal computers to assess our the content or data program from the server. Normally, to be able to do this, we have to have something called the authentication, uh, user ID, password, etc. Uh, so a network engineer may again configure everything, set up clients, uh, account everything. So sometimes a service is referred to as a mini computers. So as we said, users connect through a network with computer or team client. Actually, that's the main reason of a team client. I think client can be only, as we said, only the laptop, I mean, excuse me, only the monitor and the keyboard and maybe a mouse. Processing everything will take place inside the server. Storage also will be in the server. Now, so that's what we call a dumb terminal. Uh, also the concept of virtualization, we may discuss that in the future lectures. So creating a virtual rather than actual environment often used to share server for increased efficiency. Now we move to NES, which is the mainframe computers, more larger than the server. And we can say that the server and mainframe are doing the same tasks, but the difference is that mainframe are more powerful, bigger computers, more expensive, and normally large 
business organizations use it or can even aff afford to manage it. So mainframe computers are powerful computers used by many large organizations to manage large amounts of centralized data. For example, be a, again, international firms or a big hospital with different clinics or uh, different departments and many department universities, large businesses, banks, government offices. Located in a crime, uh, again, here we say the climate control data center and connected to the rest of the company computers through a network. And one thing again, because the mainframe computers are very, very large, when they are running, they generate a lot of heat. So they must be in a very standard cool room to again cool the CPU, the processing. It's very large, I have a very powerful CPU. And usually operate 24 hours a day. Also called a high-end service or enterprise, enterprise class service. Next, we go to the supercomputers. Now, there's not much difference between supercomputers and mainframe, but the main difference is that mainframe are used to process data. So business organizations, processing customers, uh, operation uh, businesses, uh, transactions, et cetera. Now, supercomputers are normally used in a scientific environment, maybe running a very large algorithms, uh, very complex uh, algorithms. Uh, for example, uh, weather prediction of uh, weather forecasting, you may need a, a supercomputer, a computer that is very powerful. So it's more faster, but also very expensive and also powerful type of computer. Generally run on one program at a time as fast as possible. Can cost several millions of dollars each and also tend to be very large and contain a large number of CPUs. Uh, Titan is one of the fastest computers in the world, which is also a supercomputer. So a supercomputer, same as a mainframe, should be in a very uh, uh, maintained environment, and cooling system, since it has a very powerful CPU. When it's running again, it generates a lot of heat. So that will be the conclusion for this lecture. So again, this lecture we focus on what is a computer again and six different types of computer based on some categories. We can see that the categories here are based on the, how fast the, uh, the computer is, the size of the computer and the functions they does. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.